Hello everyone and welcome to another OrcadX video. My name is Adam and for today's topic we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about how to create a custom title block for your OrcadX schematics. Now a title block traditionally uh, includes information such as the page name, uh, you know who the schematic is drawn by, maybe some contact information. Uh, and in OrcadX we do have some out of the box title blocks that you can include in your schematic. However, it is also very common to have your own custom title blocks that include things like your company logo, maybe uh, additional information such as the drawing scale, page numbers, etc. So let's take a look at how we would make those uh, in Orcad X. So to begin, what I would recommend is actually taking a look at which title blocks already exist and which one is closest to having all of the required information that you would need for your custom title block and then using that as a template to create your own. Let's take a look at where you can find the uh, included title blocks in Orcad X. To do so, go to Place and select Title Block. Now, you'll notice that in the library section, we have a, a library called CapSim. And in the CapSim library, there's already quite a few title blocks and they're numbered zero through uh, you know, a couple different title blocks, as well as you know, title blocks that meet certain standards, such as the ANSI standard. So if I select, for example, title block two, I can press OK, place it on my schematic. And here you can see that we have a couple placeholders or properties for things like title, the organization address, name, etc. Now, if we want to get into this library and maybe add another title block, uh, the quickest way to find where these are located that I would recommend is to, uh, again, go into the place title block dialog, select CapSim, and then select add line. Oh, actually, you don't have to select CapSim. Just go ahead and click add library. And in this browse file window, you'll see a list of all the default libraries that are included with Orcadex Capture. Now in this list, you'll find capsim.olb. And uh, this only works in Windows from what I know, but if you do a shift right click, you will have an option called copy as path. What that does is it copies the full path of where this OLB file is into your uh, buffer. And then we can hit cancel, cancel, and do file, open, library, and then click Control V on your keyboard, and you'll notice that you'll have the full path to that capsim.olb, and then just go ahead and click open. Now mine is already uh, open in Capture, and as you can see, we have the whole library on the left side here, and we can see all of the different title blocks that are in our um, capsim library. So if we click on one of these, you'll notice that we have the uh, you know, entire symbol opens up in our symbol editor. We can edit things such as these different uh, text objects that are on the symbol. These things here are actually properties. And uh, you can tell that it's a property because the property value is either already placed on here or it has this left arrow and right arrow indicating that there is no value assigned yet and that's just a placeholder. So what we're going to actually try to make in this video is what I have here called the title block cadence. Let's go ahead and open that. And you'll see that I included things such as the title, page name, the variant, uh, revision information, as well as the size of the page, uh, when the schematic was last modified. I have the cadence logo, so we'll look at how you can include an image of your own logo in, um, in this tutorial as well as things like the organization name and address. All right, so let's jump into creating our own title block. Okay, so for the purpose of saving time, we're not going to create everything that you see here from scratch. Instead, let's go ahead and create a new symbol. So right click on, um, on your library and select new symbol. We're going to call this title block cadence two and this is a title block symbol type. Click OK. Now what you see here is the symbol outline. As we start to add different lines, texts, or objects into our symbol, this symbol outline is going to grow on its own and it basically has to encompass everything inside of the symbol. So again, you can think of it as like a border to your symbol. 
If we want to start adding things such as lines or text, we can go into place, uh, rectangle or line. If we add a rectangle, you can simply just click and drag to add a rectangle. And if we place it outside of that symbol outline, you'll notice that the symbol outline automatically grows to uh, cover that entire space. So as you start adding multiple uh, rectangles, and you can use the um, snapping, as you see this, this gray dot appears when I'm snapped onto a grid point. If you want to turn snapping on or off, make sure you select this icon in the top left here called Snap to Grid. Uh, and then you can have some finer control over how large your rectangles are. Now, if we want to actually, okay, so let's go ahead and delete these. What I'm going to do is go into my title block cadence and I'm going to select all of this for now. And we're going to delete some objects. Let's just say we take this, this, and this. I'm selecting some of these rectangles by uh, control clicking. I don't want to redraw everything because I don't know the exact dimensions, but this will allow us to have a good starting point. So we're gonna copy that, paste it, oops. Let's turn on our snapping. We want to paste it into this corner here. Okay. And then I see that uh, maybe I'm missing one rectangle here, it looks like. There we go. So we're going to place rectangle just like that. Uh, maybe there needs to be one more rectangle here. So let's go ahead and add that. All right, so now we're ready to start adding things such as our text uh, and property placeholders. To add text, simply go to place text, uh, set the, the value of the text. So here we're going to call it title. And then place it somewhere on your title block. And then what we want to do is actually put a placeholder for, uh, for example, for example, our actual title that will be displayed in our design. Now we can't just use regular text because this text is static, meaning that once it's placed on our schematic, it's always just going to say title. So what we want to do is add a property, which you can add on the right side here. Uh, we already have something called name, and that's just the name of the symbol that we're creating but we can add another property. And you can use this dropdown for properties that are um, already predefined in ORCAD Capture. So for example, title is a property which is common for all uh, title blocks. So we can go ahead and click that. We don't have to set a value, so just click the check mark. And then if you click on this eye icon, we want it to display the value only, meaning that we don't need it to say title colon or title what is the title uh, we just want to know what that value is if we click on it we can drag it to where we want it to be displayed in our title block and then set the font size to for example uh, let's do 18 whoops font size 18 there we go now if we go back to my original title block i think i chose a little smaller font um, but you'll notice that we do this exact same process for adding the title, page name, variant, drawn by size, etc., cetera, um, all the way to, you know, these organization addresses, as well as the, uh, this is the document ID. So what I would recommend is add as many of these uh, text placeholders for whatever properties you need to be in your title block, and then simply add uh, text to have a little label for what that you know property might be denoting so another thing that we're going to add into this title block is an image of our logo so to do this go into place and select picture now you can actually add different types of pictures by default 
in the files of type, it's always going to select bitmap. But if you select the dropdown and go to, for example, a JPEG, or if you have a PNG, you can use that as well. I already have a couple different icons here. Now I can select this uh, Cadence logo, which I um, placed in this folder. And then all you need to do is basically draw how large you want that logo to be. And then maybe fit it inside of, oops, let's go ahead and drag that into here. Fit it inside of, you know, wherever that logo needs to be. Let's make that a little smaller. Okay. Now you notice that when you're resizing the Cadence logo, uh, it's going to tend to snap right to the grid points. Even if I turn off snap, you might not get the aspect ratio exactly as it's supposed to be for your company logo. Now, I personally don't care so much about, uh, you know, making it exact, but if you have, you know, a marketing department or, or HR, or whatever it might be that's very strict about how the logo needs to be displayed, what I would recommend is just take the logo and then use uh, whatever background is on it and uh, stretch it so that it is square. That way, it's very easy to fit into you know, these grids exactly. So what I did, if I go into place picture again, you'll notice that I made a square version of this logo. I just opened it in Microsoft Paint uh, and just extended the border so that it was a perfect square. And then when I'm placing it, you'll notice that the aspect ratio of the actual text is exactly as it should be. And then the rest of the space is just filled with whatever the background color was, which in this case is white. And that's about it. So when you're creating the title block, you know, you can add these texts, rectangles, um, you can even change the line style or width to make it pop a little more. And then uh, let's actually take a look at how you would place this onto your schematic. So I'll go into this uh, schematic page and you'll notice that we already have uh, this title block, which I created before, and it's already placed on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. And let's go into place, title block. And because we had it in that CapSim library, if I scroll down, it should already be there, as well as our uh, title block cadence too, which we created earlier. But again, we're gonna create, the, we're going to use this title block cadence, double click on it and place it in the bottom right corner. Now things like the title, uh, the variant drawn by, all of this extra information uh, you can either double click on these and simply type it in. So for example, uh, this happens to be a uh, ORCAD X keyboard schematic, for example. You can type that in and do it one by one on each uh, page, but you know that, that's a lot of work. What I would recommend is if you're in your project, go ahead and right click on here, the, on the design, and then select Edit Object Properties. And this is going to show you the properties for everything in this design, including, you know, the different parts in your, uh, in your schematic, the nets, the pins, etc. cetera. Uh, but you'll notice that we have a tab here called title blocks. So what it does is it displays all of the title blocks in your design. And then what you can do is just assign a value to all of those title blocks um, as if it were a table. So for example, the ID, if I have a, uh, an ID that I want to add to every single one of these title blocks. I can do this, uh, basically click and drag to select all of the um, table rows, right click, edit, and let's call the ID um, keyboard123. Once that's added, actually, you know what? I don't remember how large that, uh, you know what, let's check. Where is ID? Oh, that's this the document ID. Okay, so that should fit. So once once this is set, we can just click X on the property editor. And once we're back on the page, it's gonna ask us if we want to um, keep that value. Let's just make sure that that's the right. Uh... Oh, it should be doc, not ID that since we're not using it anymore. Okay, so again, right click on the design, edit object properties, go to title blocks, 
And then we're looking for this dock right here. And we're going to select all of them, right click, edit, keyboard, one, two, three. Once we close this, it's just gonna ask if we wanna apply the changes from editing those properties to all of our title blocks. Go ahead and select yes. And then you can see that on each of these pages, the document ID is changed to keyboard one, two, three. And that way you can you know, very quickly apply changes to your title blocks to all the pages in your design rather than doing it one by one. Now, one last thing I wanna talk about is how to set this uh, uh, sheet number. So changing the value of each sheet, one, two, three, four, et cetera, especially if maybe you move some sheets around, uh, that can be quite an annoying process. But this is actually already handled for you uh, by Orcad X if you just simply annotate your design. So let's go ahead and save the design. And then we're going to uh, right click on the design and select annotate. And then the page order uh, should just automatically be updated. And uh, da, da, da. I don't remember if there's a specific option in here for, um, yeah, no, we, we don't have to select any special option here for changing the page number. It's already handled for us. Go ahead and select okay and yes. And then you'll notice that this page is now one of seven rather than I believe it was three of whatever it may have been before. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, what I will do is share this title block with everyone so that if you want to, you can download it, open it in your design, maybe copy it over to your CapSim library or copy it over to one of your custom title block libraries and then use that as a template to create your own title block. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll try to answer them as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, thanks again and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.